Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode of AI and the Enterprise. I want to introduce you to our guest right up front. It's Donyan Wong. And Donyan, hi. Thank Hello, you for joining us. here. Fantastic. I'm going to introduce, um, I think, the topic, because it's important that we take a minute and spend some time thinking through one of the big things that's happening in the world of AI and the enterprise. And I asked Donyan to join us because I've been asked this question about four times in the last 10 days, and that is, are we in the second chapter of enterprise AI? And it got me thinking, and I actually believe the answer is yes, that we are in our second chapter. That chapter one was around bringing AI as a broad horizontal capability, putting it into the enterprise, trying, experimenting, seeing where it works. And we've come a long ways from, those, from that early chapter one. We're definitely in chapter two because we're now able to apply AI in a very narrow way into a domain specific problem and get to results much faster. And part of the reason we've been able to do that is because AI has gotten more specialized and it's gotten more trained for specific nuances and domain and, and syntax and ontologies. And I wanted to unpeel that a little bit. And, and for that reason, I wanted to bring Don Young in. Now it's interesting, many of you will have known of Andrew Ng. Um, the last I met with Andrew, and by the way, Andrew, as you know, was co-founder at Google Brain, was chief scientist at Baidu. He's an adjunct professor here at Stanford University. I was speaking to him and he introduced me to a company that he had founded and he's now CEO of, and it's Landing AI. And it turns out Don Young is actually the vice president of AI transformation for Landing AI. And so in his role, he does two things. He's responsible for customer successes in AI-based transformational projects. And he's responsible for defining the product strategy, the platform strategy for what they're building. And I thought it'd be really interesting to bring him into this mix and to unpeel with him together and with your help sort of what's going on in this world. So that's the backdrop to today. I'd like you to join in, comment, provide questions, inputs, and we'll take this discussion forward. And so with that as a backdrop, Donyan, let me turn back to you. By the way, before we jump into verticalized AI, uh, and you and I spoke a few times, you know, one of the very interesting things about your background is you've got such a rich and a broad spectrum of technology experience. And then of course, most recently, you spent all those years looking into blockchain and went deep into it. And so you've gone from there now into AI as the next big thing. Why AI? Any thoughts? It's almost like coming back home uh, because I was actually educated uh, in AI, you know, from bachelor, master, to PhD. But then back then, since I don't have a supercomputer in my pocket, so, uh, you know, and we, are, we were in the AI winter, so nobody can technically find AI jobs. So I've, I've been doing a lot of work on data analytics and all those things for big companies like Cisco, NetApp. Uh, but then when 2012, when the deep learning started to come back, it's almost like, uh, you know, now finally it's our time. So I came back to the field, has been the field of doing AI, plus a little bit of blockchain, you know, for the last, uh, you know, eight years. That's awesome. I mean, I love your, I love your point. The time for AI is now, and you're right in many ways. And so that's fantastic. Okay, so we're going to take that and jump into the topic at hand, which is you're one of those people that really fundamentally believe that AI needs to be verticalized. What does that mean first off and why? I think if you look at the AI spaces, right, we're still in the early inning uh, to really use AI to apply value uh, to a real application or a real customer. Uh, there are beginning to, ha beginning to have a horizontal platform to enable, for example, you know, AutoML, you know, all the big internet companies have this kind of tools for hardcore machine learning engineers, for example. But if you look at those, those are really techy platform for techy people those are not really application platform. So normal people, right? Like the IT people, software engineers in traditional enterprises, especially can use to develop applications specific to their, uh, to their own applications. On the other side, I think if you look at the, P the companies really successful in AI, it's pretty much very limited to the large internet enterprises, which they have thousands of people. They have a tons of resources. They probably got all the best AI people uh, and the thousands of people working on recommendation engine, for example, search engine, AI powered. That's not something traditional enterprises or even a normal high tech enterprise can do. So they are desperately looking for solutions to say, how can you help me to build AI solutions with probably not the large and also the top talent in the AI team, but some tools to give to me to enable my vertical applications. And that's really the emergence of the verticalized application and the platform associated with them. Let, let me let me let me push on that. I I know the answer to that, but I want I want this I want you to bring this out for me and for my audience. So you know I thought that there are these large hyperscalers that have artificial intelligence platforms and these large computer engines, 
And if I'm one of those enterprises that wants to quickly get into AI, I can bring those on a pay for use basis and boom, I'm ready to go. But what I'm hearing from you is that's good, but it's not enough. And there's something else that's needed. What is that piece in the middle? Yeah, so when we define the vertical platform, right? So what do we mean? Uh, so for example, if you look at uh, some examples landing are working on, for example, let's say visual inspection for manufacturing, right? Versus in general computer vision. It is a computer vision issue, but the details and the nature of the problem is much, much deeper and much, much more specific. So we look at the manufacturing images coming from the AI machines, for example, and the issues, the whole life cycle of the machine learning, how do you really get the defects of the visual uh, inspection, you know, really be able to analyze what is the defect, what is not called ambiguity of that, how do you label those in large batches, right? And how do you really form a data set for AI training and what kind of specific models you want to use that are effective for the visual inspection problem. All those things has a big, big uh, correlation to what the business problem you are trying to solve in that vertical versus Let's say the general platform may offer you thousands of or hundreds of models, right? But and also some generic labeling tools, but they are not optimized or specialized for the vertical problem. So that's super interesting. And if I heard you right, I think what you're saying, and we know this to be true, but just to quickly summarize, I think what you're saying is what's in the middle is once you take a large horizontal platform, you still have to label the data and, and govern and manage the data so you can actually train the engine. So there's a significant amount of work associated with that. You still have to contextualize um, and, and bring in the nuances of that specific domain and, and the implications of certain things. And you still have to visualize in a manner that it drives action by users in that domain in a way that they can contextualize and understand it. And I think you're saying that these three things don't really come with the, with just with a broad horizontal platform. Is that did I sort of get that? Did, did yes. you want to comment? Yes, that's the case. And actually, one funny thing about the uh, AI, user deep learning or machine learning, or especially on the deep learning side, I think a lot of the people uh, tend to focus on the models. Uh, but from our experience, we're lending uh, even my old uh, previous life before lending to really work on the real AI application to deploy to the customer. Honestly, probably only around 5 to 10% of the work is on models. Especially for a company like Lending, I mean, we have accumulated so many good models, so we can just typically leverage the models. 70% of the work is actually on the data itself. Try to get the data, really clean the data, really label the data, make sure the label is correct. Um, it's very common, almost 100% of the time, we see the data already labeled from a well-reputed customer. Even they have been working with multiple AI companies, we can improve the data labels by you know, 20 to 30%, if not more, right? If it's garbage in, garbage out, no matter what's the model you have, uh, if the data set is really not well labeled, and that requires a lot of knowledge of the domain as well, then you cannot get good results, right? Uh, so we have one customer, I think, one example, in basically two weeks, uh, you know, we send one engineer. The engineer only spent half a day on the model. The rest of the, you know, two weeks, use our platform to clean up the data, you know, after those, improve the accuracy from 70% to 94%. Just basically clean the data. That's all the magic is about. Uh, I'm not saying the model is not important, but it's equally important to the data. But if you look at the time spending, the data part, the other part, the data management part of the AI problem is actually much, much larger than the model and the algorithms. I'll tell you the number of times I've heard that comment, and I know this to be so true in even the work we do. As you said, 80% more than that is actually working on managing, governing, transforming, munging all the data together. Yeah. and get to a point where you can use a train your engine. And you're right that the actually I work on the back of that. And I guess what you're saying is this piece in the middle, the piece that was missing is that you're taking 80% of that workload and you're actually taking it out of the way. So enterprises like mine and others can actually take advantage of this more abstracted, more specific mm -hmm. you know, AI platform that we can get results with faster. Um, by the way, if that's the case, and I'm just gonna push this out to the next level, if you're saying horizontal platforms kinda are nice but don't really suffice, and verticalized platforms sort of hit this need, are you also making the case that eventually the world's gonna get to a point where it's not even by vertical, it's by a company or a, or a specific problem, and then aren't we just gonna have so many different engines out there? How do you think about that? 
I think I think it's going to be something in the middle. That's why we call it a verticalized platform. So it won't be a uh, one horizontal prop, a platform. We don't believe general AI or general AI platform will solve the issue. It will be a nice, uh, you know, kind of tool for certain people, especially for the engineers. But for most of the companies, most of the audience out there, right, which there's a lot outside of the top internet companies, they have real needs for AI and they really need this kind of tools. I believe there will be, uh, you know, probably, you know, number of, you know, tens, twenties, or in the hundreds level of different kind of specialized vertical platforms. And I'll give you two examples. One is kind of a computer vision, right? So I mentioned visual inspection for manufacturing. The same platform can be easily migrated over to do medical imaging, for example. The fundamental issues, 80%, 90% is the same, is dealing with images or videos even, right? To really do that. But there are, uh, you, know, you know, kind of a lot of details, medical images different, but that, that can be adjusted. So to truly make that platform efficient and effective for the, you know, medical imaging uh, audience. On the other side, you know, one of the other, um, you know, kind of focus my team and the landing are working on besides computer vision is also what we call the AI analytics. So sometimes we use the word deep link analytics. So this is basically really bring the data to really build the data in a very specialized structure uh, and then apply AI on top of that, right? So I want to emphasize that there's three components here. One, you understand the data, the business. Like if you talk about customer 360 or fraud detection or demand forecasting, you really have to understand the business to do this job. And the second one, how can we really show the data in a different way, not traditional you know, database can do, and to reveal enough insights, and then you apply AI to harvest that. So when you look at that, the, it has to be application specific, right? When I say customer 360, but I don't have to build a customer 360 specifically to each company because most of the enterprises, I will argue our general structure and the algorithm can work for a general you know, customer 360 issue. So I view this, we may have a customer 360 analytics platform, right? We may have a data forecasting, maybe fraud detection, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So specialized, but not you know, customized for each use case. Specialized, but not into a point where it's customized for every single company differently. So okay. that's, yeah. that's a great journey. I wish you well on that. Hey, listen, before I let you go, um, it's always intriguing. I talk to so many people and, and everyone and I talk to, I try and get an example of how AI is touching their lives. I'm going to ask you this one last question, you know, away from your work at Landing AI. Give me an example of something that you've seen out there that's really cool, really interesting in the use of AI in your life. You know, it's kind of interesting because I have always been working for American, you know, fortune companies, right? But in 2016, I had the, the luxury to join a, a Chinese Fortune 300, global Fortune 300 company. And then that's the time I to be, uh, began to brush up my Chinese, right? Reading and writing. So I began to encounter this uh, Chinese news app called Toutiao. Uh, so it's probably not well known here, but it's actually produced uh, by the same company that produced TikTok, uh, uh, ByteDance. So the yeah. funny thing about this news app is actually, it actually integrate the Chinese version of TikTok into that app. So it's basically recommend and personalized news uh, kind of video content and uh, those things to you. Uh, but the funny thing is actually, they do recommend a lot of very serious content, right? The ghost news and also kind of a video like fitness, well, wellness being, you know, even education courses based on interest. And they are well, well uh, they, they were considered to be the best AI company in China. This is not by public, this is by the top executives of, uh, you know, large, large companies, even like the, you know, kind of, uh, the top tier of the top 10 companies. They all say, oh, that's the best company. Because the algorithm does not really recommend you uh, only certain topic. They, they try to really recommend broader topic, but it's still fulfilling your interest. So I found that as, as very useful. I'm still using that to you know, both reading Chinese and also English content. Well, it's really amazing because I think for post the pandemic, all of us are in the same boat. We're working from home, we're living at work, we're doing so many things together. And this convergence of news and information and entertainment coming yeah. together and AI actually making that happen is just fantastic to see. What a great example. I haven't tried this application, but I'm gonna take a look at it. Donia, yeah. I wanna thank you for your time with us today. Good luck with everything you're doing. And to my audience, thanks for joining. Uh, John Young is gonna be on LinkedIn uh, with us. So if you've got questions, we have follow up. I'm sure he'll be happy to take them. I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care, goodbye. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you, everyone.